I'm Adrian Van Oven, the Director General of Medicines for Europe, and I'm very pleased to host another episode of our podcast, this time devoted to the impact of inflation on the availability of medicines. I'm here with two very knowledgeable experts of the industry. Elizabeth Sampa is a board member of Medichem and also the president of Medicines for Europe. Her company is involved in the production of medicines from the active pharmaceutical ingredient to the medicines themselves, and therefore has a good understanding of how inflation impacts the manufacturing of medicines and therefore their supply. We also have Borg Brettauer, who's the Director General of the Association of Generic Medicines in Germany called Pro Generica, Pro Biosimilars. And he has a lot of experience with how the European markets, in particular the German markets, should be adjusted to deal with inflation. So inflation, everybody is facing that today. Higher costs when you go to the grocery store, higher prices of gasoline when you fill your car. But what does this mean for your access to medicines? For manufacturers, inflation has a big impact. We see in Europe that the costs of many of the inputs for medicines are increasing dramatically, such as raw material costs rising by over 150%, energy costs rising by up to 300%, and transportation costs sometimes up by 500%. All of this needs to be integrated into the costs of manufacturing and, of course, the sales of the medicines. In Europe, this is a little bit more complicated because medicine sales are regulated by the government, so the prices cannot really go up. So we're going to discuss today how manufacturers are dealing with this complex challenge and how market reforms might be introduced to deal with this as well. Elizabeth, I'd like to ask you a question. What is the perspective of the off-patent pharmaceutical manufacturers on the impact of inflation and on cost of goods? Yes, Adrian. So the impact is that because we have in most of the European countries fixed price for the off patent medicines and there is no option to review that price, the margins, the margins because of inflation keep going down. And this makes that companies may think that those products are now profitable any longer. So there is a high risk of withdrawal of those products from the market. So the patients have no longer access. And if we have three, four suppliers, maybe the patients are left with one single supplier of that product. So if something happens to that supplier or manufacturer, for whatever reason, the supply chain or there is an a problem at the, at, the, at the plant, whatever. So there is a risk of shortage of that product in the market. And there is also the increased risk of having more dependency on the supply outside from Europe with the risks associated to that. Thank you, Elizabeth. Borg, tell me, in Germany, how has inflation impacted the availability of off-patent medicines? I think we in 2022, we already saw some very negative actually examples um, that were caused by rising costs and that were the shortages of tamoxifen and some kids' medicines. So, and the reason for that is that only in theory, in my country, companies are allowed to increase their prices. Why am I saying in theory? Because our system is so rigid that due to very detailed and very rigid price mechanisms that have been introduced in the last 10 to 15 years or so in, in, in Germany, a given company that really increases prices would have to pay back the very amount of the price increase to the health insurance fund. So it doesn't help companies. So that's the main issue that we see. So at the end of the day, there's just one choice for a company, whether that should stay in the market, uh, you know, risking to making a loss with a given product or exiting the market. And this is what we see more often and what really causes the headaches that we have in the markets with shortages. Okay, so I understand from both of you, you have on the one hand a very rigid pricing structure where the cost of the price of medicines cannot increase due to public policies. And on the other hand, you have soaring inflation on the manufacturing side, and this is not tenuous over time. The European Union is revising its pharmaceutical policy called the Pharmaceutical Strategy for Europe. How can that support the off-patent medicines manufacturers in this challenging time? 
the pharmaceutical strategy or the new version of this pharmaceutical strategy can help to sustain the off-patent and biosimilar sector, basically by implementing guidelines and measures which can help to sustain our sector industry with different uh, actions. One is addressing the public procurement framework, which is currently in place in Europe, because the current situation is only encouraging price reductions, which are not sustainable on the long term. So we have proposed here to have alternatives like multi-winner tenders or applying meat criteria to the tender itself. And this was, would definitely help relax this very constrained procurement way of acting in, in most of the European countries. The revision of the pharmaceutical legislation could also encourage a fair IP environment where there would now be additional divisional patents, which in some kind, in some cases are only evergreening technique. And we would also aim for a clear bowler or a similar or the same understanding of the bowler in the different European countries, because now it's not clear and the interpretation of the bowler provision is different depending on which countries we look at. We are also aiming for a review on the regulatory data protection that favors the launch of the generic version of the innovative product sooner than later, because we believe this increases uh, the availability of affordable medicines for the European patients. And there could be other incentives for the innovator than not extending the data protection times. We are definitely uh, in favor of increased regulatory efficiencies and digital upgrade in all the regulatory part of, of the medicine registration, which is very burdensome both for the authorities but also for the companies. And those would be measures which would add flexibility to the market in, in a very immediate way. And we are definitely in favor of uh, the what we call value-added medicines, which are medicines aimed, which are old medicines aimed for new indications or new combinations, which have where we have nice examples like dexamethasone used during the COVID in the emergency units. And we believe that a regulatory pathway for this kind of medicines would be extremely useful for the European patient. In other continents, we are seeing that there is this regulatory path pathway. Uh, unfortunately, it does not exist in Europe. And we believe it would add a full range of alternatives, which would help the patients and in some cases also the, the caregivers. And I would say, though, that would be those would be the main topics where we think the review version of the pharmaceutical legislation could sustain the biosimilar and off-patent sector, but also make it broader and, and able to provide more drugs for the European patient. Thank you, Elizabeth Bork. I'd like to turn to you now. In Germany, there have been several big challenges in 2022 and even before that with the supply resilience of medicines leading in some cases to uh, shortages or high risks of shortages, including for children's medicines or cancer medicines, which of course bring high risk uh, to the patient. Focusing more on the European level, are there things that the European Union could do to help the industry in Germany, to help the German government to improve uh, supply resilience and reduce these uh, shortage risks going forward? Absolutely, Adrian. I think there are at least three or four main pillars, and Elizabeth touched upon on them quite clearly. So I think the first thing is really what we need is a clear and quite comprehensive regime, let's say, for intellectual property rights in, in Europe. So that's kind of European framework condition that we need that needs to take to, into account the sustainability of our sector. Second, I think what we really need is a clear regulatory framework. And we know that, you know, like EMA is very ambitious also to work now on shortages, something we do support. Thirdly, I would say the guidance that is already mentioned, the guidance from the EU sector on public procurement is critical here. All payers and all hospitals, 
usually go for the lowest bidder for the lowest price only so and that already accelerated market concentration we saw last year in my country that was first of all tamoxifen and as you as you were saying some uh, products uh, especially kids medicines and that, that was really a really big problem for our country and of course for patients because what we really saw was that companies were not able to sustain production in this rigid pricing reimburse, reimbursement uh, regime that we have, especially in my country. So in addition to that, we already had quite some market concentration, which means there are only few companies supplying the market, really. Uh, so if you take tamoxifen, there were in the beginning of 2022 only four companies supplying the market in Germany. Now we actually have two so it's even worse so what we need in our country and i guess also in other markets are really structural fundamental changes that have one goal in common and the goal should be how can we include more suppliers how can markets become more attractive for companies to join because only if we have enough companies supplying the market security of supply can be secured i think I'd like to talk about the changes that have also been done at the national level, but before doing that, I'd just like to ask Elizabeth a follow-on question to your remark, Bork. Elizabeth, Bork mentioned uh, the fact that the EU has made a lot of promises to support investment in medicines and active pharmaceutical ingredients manufacturing in Europe. Have you seen that translate into real strategy, a real industrial policy, if you wish, or uh, is that waning? Unfortunately, we have not seen any of those promises materialized. Our member companies are struggling to access to some of the instruments which have been put in place, like the ICPI. We are not seeing any of those incentives available for the companies. And we still believe that the authorities should, as Borg was saying, try to attract more industry players, attract more uh, investments here. And there are different investments which should be done if we want to keep that industry active in Europe. And also if we want to have that industry becoming greener and comply with the Green Deal promises. Otherwise, the number of, of companies or the industries will decrease even more than what it has done in the, in the past years. Okay, so a shared understanding that there's a need for a real industrial strategy. Now I'd like to move to discussions at the at the national level. So obviously in Europe, pricing reimbursement, the actual purchasing of medicine by pharmacies or hospitals are, are reimbursed by national governments, not by the EU. So if Pricing policies and procurement policies need to be adjusted. This needs to be done in the countries. Elizabeth, what would be some good recommendations to governments on how they could tackle the inflation problem and improve the resilient supply of medicine? Well, as you know perfectly, uh, the prices of the off-patent products are granted when the product is launched commercially. And unfortunately, in most of the European countries, there are a few exceptions, but in most of the European countries, there are no options to review those prices. If there is a review, it's only going downwards because there are clawbacks or reference pricing measures or similar tools which only drive the prices of the generic product down. This makes, uh, th this does not allow for a review of those prices. And obviously, if the product had a margin at launch and along the years with the yearly inflation, which was not, fortunately enough, was not the one we have had in the, in the past month. But even though, and if you add the inflation of the last year, most of those products probably have no margin at all. And the risk there is obviously of the companies withdrawing those products from the market because they are not profitable or sustainable anymore. And this leads to potential drug, drug shortages, as Borg was explaining, and, or we increase our dependency on other geographies outside Europe, which goes against this idea of a European um, strategic autonomy. So my recommendation to the countries 
And unfortunately, we are not seeing enough examples of that. I think German is moving towards there. We have some potential examples also in, in Greece and in, in Portugal. But unfortunately, there's only three out of 27 countries in the, in the EU. Uh, I would ask for revision mechanisms for the prices of the, of the off patent uh, medicines because this would allow some flexibility and some more air to the manufacturer both of the finished products but also of the API prices which were granted 10 or 15 years ago probably are just by the regular yearly inflation are not sustainable anymore so and if you add to that the high whatever between 8 and 10 percent inflation depending on the different European countries this definitely makes the, pro the products uh, having a negative margin. Because of this pressure of pr driving prices down with maximizing volumes, choosing in most of the cases the lowest price uh, API with sometimes least quality, quality issues. So this is so perfect if you if you wish in, in a sense that it does not allow for any production increases or anything like having two three api suppliers because this costs money so the the whole production line is so maximized or optimized that there is no room for flexibility so if there is an increase in demand like we have been facing in the past two months on on infectious diseases it's extremely difficult to implement measures like we now add a, a new line or we increase the, the number of shifts, things which in maybe in other industries are possible are not possible in the pharma industry. Thank you. Or tell us a little bit about what you would recommend specifically for Germany in terms of reforms. As we discussed earlier, there have been genuine shortage situations, very unfortunate ones. Um, Elizabeth has explained a little bit in Europe wide what the problems are. So go ahead and tell us a little bit more what could be done in Germany to alleviate the situation. Well, I think I can really build on what Elizabeth was just saying, and I couldn't agree more with the result that on one hand, you know, the generic industry is a really kind of champion in streamlining their supply chains. But this is kind of, you know, that's the result of what policymakers really ordered, you could say, right? Because that they were the ones to set the framework conditions. So what we see is the lack of flexibility, especially when it comes to short term approaches and i would just add one element and this is there's no room for generic companies and prices to breathe and to adapt to inflation and that is one of the major concerns and problems i see in in our market here in germany take alone the fact that prices are frozen on the price level of summer 2009 so now we have 2000 and 23. So what we all can imagine easily is that prices for so many things went up, especially wages for workers and things like that. So, And if there's no room to adapt prices accordingly for companies, they only have the choice to make a loss with a certain product, what we saw actually in Germany with tamoxifen and the kids medicines, or just also to quit the market. Uh, so, And that's exactly both are things that do threaten security of supply. And I finally have to do, and societies and policymakers have to do, is they, they have to ensure that health systems do incentivize companies that do what society wants them to do, meaning, you know, investments in more robust and su su uh, resilient supply chains, uh, investment in climate-friendly production and medicines for children and things like that. So that's the most important thing for me. And secondly, and as far as uh, inflation is concerned, I think what we really need is that companies need the possibility to adjust their prices, of course, accordingly, even in tender systems or discount contracts that we see in my country uh, in short term, because otherwise they will, will make a loss and have to terminate them. And this is uh, not in the interest neither of uh, companies nor policymakers. So I think that's that's what we need to do now. Thank you. So uh, I appreciate it. I think if I summarize from the two of you, what I understand is that this industry, which supplies 70% of prescription medicines, is really an important pillar of public health. So we need a strong and dynamic and competitive manufacturing sector in Europe. 
And we also need policies that encourage that, that sustain that, whether it's to do with pricing or regulatory or um, funds from the EU. Uh, so all of these are, are really part of a partnership between the industry and the government to ultimately serve patient needs. So I'd like to thank you for this exchange and uh, really appreciate your expert opinions. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thanks.